I use this fragrance that I'm about to share with you in more than 20 different candles that I make. It is my secret behind, I would say, my Wanderlust collection. Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow Inc. And this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about fragrance blending, and this is a really great way to get your own unique custom fragrances uh, that no one else has on the market. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 blenders. And these fragrances are must-haves um, because they are going to change your life. Starting us off here, we have Rose Petals um, by Candle Science. And this uh, takes my number 10 spot because you can literally take this fragrance in anything you want to have the most beautiful natural rose aroma. Um, just add a tiny bit of this too and it transforms into this beautiful spa-like fragrance um, that's just divine, especially around like Valentine's Day and um, in the springtime and summer. Um, this is a must-have. And don't get this confused with Wild Rose by Candle Science. That fragrance to me smells very artificial and um, I would avoid it at all costs. But Rose Petals, must-have, takes my top, or my number 10 spot. Number nine, we have Amber Romance, and this is by The Flaming Candle. Um, this fragrance I use in my French collection. I actually blend this with Gardenia Tuba Rose by Candle Science and it just adds the most subtle, beautiful, um, soft amber, but it's like such an elegant amber. It's not that kind of musky. Um, I love Egyptian Amber by Candle Science, but that is definitely more of like a musky kind of masculine amber to me. This is an elegant, um, just stunning um, amber that has like light floral echoes to it as well. Um, don't get this confused with the Nature's Garden um, I bought the same fragrance by Nature's Garden just to try um, from another supplier and I would never use this um, in my candles. It was a big mistake to buy a 16 ounce bottle. Um, it smells like suntan lotion. So Amber Romance from The Flaming Candle takes my number nine. Vetiver is one that is definitely a true vetiver. Um, if you've smelled the essential oil, it's very similar to that. It's a very earthy, deep, resonant base type fragrance. Um, almost has a little bit of that kind of skankiness to it as well um, that you do get in some natural vetivers. Um, this is a beautiful one if you're looking to add, especially in a fall collection, like if you're working with a leaves fragrance, for example, and you want to add a little bit more depth and dimension to it and a little bit more earthiness, um, this is an absolutely stunning one to add. Cedarwood Blanc by Candle Science. And this one I definitely think has a beautiful, almost like moonlight vanilla component to it. It's not just a straight cedarwood. Um, it's definitely got a heavy amount of cedarwood to it, but it's also just got this sort of magical quality to it that I also think works really well in fall and winter collections um, if you're looking for a nice, earthy, but also slightly magical um, blend. Number six, we have Amber and Dripwood um, by Candle Science. And I'm also grouping with this one, the Mahogany and Shea by Candle Science, because I do think that these two fragrances um, could be used similarly. Um, really, really great if you make soaps and um, they just add a sort of luxurious earthy component, the Mahogany and Shea definitely um, is a little bit more prominent than the Amber and Driftwood, at least in my applications. Um, I've noticed that this has a better uh, throw in soy as well as in soap making. Um, the Amber and Driftwood though is absolutely beautiful. It's very subtle by itself. Um, I do wish it were stronger alone because I would love to use it as a standalone fragrance, but working as a blender to add that luxurious component, um, if you're looking for something that is earthy, but also clean. Coming in my number five spot, I can't believe I'm saying this honestly, um, because I don't really like this fragrance, but I will say, um, this is Fireside by Candle Science. I will say that this adds a lot of kind of smokiness to any fragrance you're working with. 
Um, in all honesty, I would recommend the one by Stone Candles, the fireside that they make, but it is really expensive and this one is very similar to it. Um, again, I don't really like this fragrance. I am guilty of using it on multiple occasions when I want to make like a bonfire type scent. I'll mix it with very vanilla or with creme brulee. Um, and you can create like a toasted marshmallow type scent. Um, just a really beautiful one to add a smokiness. Um, again, I say really beautiful. It works really beautifully as a blender to add smokiness um, to any fragrance. In at number five, we have Fresh Coffee by Candle Science. And you can see as we're getting into these last ones that I really am obsessed with them because I literally have five pound buckets of these. Um, that I use as blenders. Um, so the fresh coffee one, um, I do also use as a standalone fragrance. Um, a lot of people uh, have said that this is a little bit too strong for them. I personally really like it. Um, I call it Uncommon Grounds and it is my standalone coffee fragrance. However, um, this is really great if you have, for example, a coffee house by the flaming candle and you wanna do like a 50-50, and get like a caramel latte type of a scent or um, you can mix this with basically any other like add-on like you can even mix it with lavender if you want like a lavender latte or you can mix it with um, uh, hazelnut coffee if you want like a hazelnut type of a like you could add a more sweet component to it but this is going to give you a fantastic base for a deep rich coffee scent my only regret about this fragrance is that you cannot use it in soap um, it's a real shame. Um, I would say Brambleberry's Espresso is still the best coffee fragrance that I found to use in soaps. Um, if you like making cold process soaps, but this for candle purposes, um, is a must have, even if you think it's too strong because you can blend it with almost any other coffee fragrance or latte type fragrance. And there you go. Um, you have a best-selling coffee. So coming in at number four, let me get this one off the table, um, is Dragon's Blood. And I actually have two five pound jugs of this that I keep on hand at all times um, because this is, it's so good. Um, if you're looking for that kind of incense-y type fragrance to add to like a spiritual scent or even to a masculine scent like a mahogany and teak wood, you could use Dragon's Blood or you could use this um, by itself. Um, I sell a candle called Go Smudge Yourself and that is just straight Dragon's Blood um, by Candle Science. Or you could also use this um, in like even like a upscale uh, type of a spa scent um, that leans more incensey. Um, it's just a must have blender for masculine and I would say anything that has this kind of a new age character um, is gonna be really great. Coming for this in at number three, you have Sea Minerals uh, by Candle Science. These are all like backwards, I think, on the camera, but this is Sea Minerals by Candle Science. And okay, if you want to make like what I use this for is in my, I have a Stormwatch candle and an After the Rain candle. And I use this in my Stormwatch scent because it just adds that earthy dimension, but it's like a sea earthy dimension. Um, it's exactly true to name. Oh my God, this fragrance is so underrated. I don't even think it's reviewed very well in Candle Science, but it is a must have blender for anything where you're doing like an ocean like fragrance, but you want more of like an earthy component or like an after the rain and you want that kind of earthiness to it. Or like I use it for in my Stormwatch candle. Um, it's a must have. In the number two spot, we have French Lilac from Candle Science. And where do I even begin? If you do anything with spa-like fragrances, you have to have this in your collection. Um, I actually paired it with lavender as well. And I have in my notes that you could use either or. Um, I don't think you need both of these, but my preference would definitely be, if you can only buy one, the French Lilac. Um, 
because it's so much more unique than lavender. I have a candle called Lavender Zen that I use a 50-50 blend of this French lilac and lavender. Um, I've also used this before in multiple other applications, um, such as my After the Rain candle. Um, I blend this with fresh cut grass, actually. And oh my God, it is just the most beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It's an elegant, refreshing, clean, spa-like floral that is going to elevate any blend um, that you're doing. I can't think of many applications where this wouldn't work. Taking the number one spot um, is Tonka in Oud by Candle Science. And my jug is almost empty. I use this in my Hogwarts Library candle. I use this in my London Fog candle. Um, it is the most lovely, luxurious, sophisticated, just defined blend, um, blender. I don't use this as a standalone fragrance. You absolutely could. The hot throw on this is out of this world in soy. Um, I'm sure it would be in any other wax blend if it performs well in soy. Um, and it's just, oh my God, it's, it's so deep and it's so sophisticated and refined. It does lean a little bit more what some people might call masculine, but I really wouldn't call it that. Um, I blend it with sometimes amber and driftwood, mahogany and shea, um, sandalwood, all by candle science, just to name a few. But this is a bestseller for me in multiple blends, including my Hogwarts library candle and my London fog candle and it is a must have um, in my opinion. We are not done yet. I have two fragrances that I think are off the charts that don't even make my top 10 because they are so good that you just must have them. They are like, they're off the charts. Uh, the first one of those, well, okay, I'm gonna go in order. So I'm gonna do my number two and then my number one of the off the charts. Um, so my number two is Sugar Cookie by Candles and Supplies. Um, this fragrance, if you ever are like me and you have that problem where you are dealing with fragrances that smell too much like the cinnamon and sugar and they don't have enough of the cookie or the banana cream pie and they don't have enough of the bread, hint, hint, candle science, uh, my number one application of this with their banana bread fragrance, which is such a hit by itself, Elevate it even more by adding a little bit of this and you will have people going, what the heck did you put in there to literally make this smell like I'm biting into banana bread? My number one off the charts of all fragrances that you must just go out and buy a five pound bucket of, or if you're a small business, at least buy a 16 ounce bottle of this because it is going to change your literal life. I use this fragrance that I'm about to share with you in more than 20 different candles that I make. It is my secret behind, I would say, my Wanderlust collection in a number of ways because it just adds that sophisticated note that is like the underpinning and people just wonder what is that that makes this whole collection cohesive. I I'm like getting chills talking about this fragrance. It is that good. Um, Sandalwood by Candle Science. This is not a straight sandalwood. This is a sandalwood plus. It's a sandalwood off the charts. Unfortunately, you cannot use this by itself, at least not very well in soy candles. I've tried. It just doesn't have the hot throw by itself, but mix this with almost anything if you want a luxurious, clean, earthy dimension to almost any fragrance. I didn't tell you about it. It's your secret now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful time trying all these fragrances out in your candle making. And as always, if this video was useful to you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. We're always posting videos like this. And anyways, that's all for today and I will see you in the next one.